1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's read from verse 7 to verse 10. But the manifestation of the Spirit, notice the capital S is the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. Let's pray. Father, you are the great eternal Spirit. And we ask you now, Lord, that you would severally speak to every heart. And Lord, that you would, as it were, in gift and enable your people. And we pray, O oh God, that this word would be living and real and alive to every single one of us. Father, we love your Son, the Lord Jesus. He is our heart's desire. He's our very life. And we ask you, God, through all of these, that he would be glorified in everything. For he alone is worthy. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We have looked at uh, quite a bit over the last few weeks. And this, this morning we want to look at two other gifts of the Spirit. One is to another, the working of miracles in verse 10. We'll look at that first. And then we'll look at gifts of healing in verse 9. God willing, after that. Another work, to another working of miracles, Paul tells us. And I can't recap all the weeks that we have told and taught through this. But one of the renderings is, um, instead of to another working of miracles, it is the exercise of the miraculous power of God. You see, if you and I are, or since you and I are the body of Christ on earth, that is the mystical body, is his literal body is ascended into heaven, raised, ascended, and glorified at the right hand of God, in the place of power and authority. And you and I are what's known as the, the body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ on the earth. So his spirit is within us. The same spirit that was in the man Christ Jesus, he is within us as born again, blood washed children of God. And so the exercise of the miraculous powers of God should still be exercised through the church because we are his body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 29, if you let your eye run down, Paul, he makes a statement, but really it's a question, but it's a statement in it. He says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Then he says, have all gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? So Paul is saying there are, as the body is fitly framed together by God, you are individual, you are particular, yet not only are you individual and particular, a member of that body in particular, but you are a living stone in that great temple of the Holy Spirit. And since you are as a believer in the Lord Jesus and with his spirit indwelling you, since you are, when we come together, we are the body of Christ and we work like cogs, as it were, the body functioning together. So as especially we come together, we should have everything that we need in this room right now. Think about this. Now, the word of God isn't wrong. And the word of God doesn't fail, but there must be something wrong with 
either you and I or our theology or our thinking. So we must not try and work theology around just to fit what we think or what we think we know or believe. But we must also not fit our theology to our experience. Well, I have never experienced any of it. That doesn't mean to say it's not real. But we must always fit our experience in with what the Word of God says or our theology to one for a better word. Because who God is is bigger than who you are. And who God is is bigger than who I am. And what we tend to do is lock them in a box. Our Sunday morning and our Sunday evening box. Our Sunday morning box is we come, sing a few songs, gather around the table, and we go home and there then we clock our card. And that's a Sunday morning box. Our Sunday evening box is we expect to hear of the blood or maybe some topical sermon, maybe on prophecy. And that's the Sunday evening box. And sometimes the two of us have both. And the third one is we put, place it on top of it as our Bible study box on a Tuesday evening or whatever uh, evening we have it on. And so there God is allowed to move inside these three boxes in this allotted time. But really he is the God of all creation. He is the great eternal spirit who encompasses all time that you and I know. He's outside of time and he fulfills and fills all of eternity. So he's bigger than you could ever ask or think. And he can do greater and more than you could ever ask or think. So for you and I to say God doesn't do it today, then we are limiting God to what he wants to do. So in this one we have to another the working of miracles. It means here really that Paul is saying when the Spirit of God is in a man and in a woman, when Christ is living in them, Paul is really saying that man or woman is to be possessed with the powers to work wonders under the influence of God. And you see, God won't work wonders among the church when the church is too sold out to doubt You and I are completely sold out to doubt. A.B. Simpson, who wrote the wonderful hymn, Yesterday, Today, Forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. He was a a Presbyterian upbringing, like myself. As he came through a Presbyterian upbringing, he, he took very ill as a young lad, and there was no hope for him, and he was brought into a church that believed that God was the same yesterday and today and forever. And God healed him on the spot and he became a mighty man for God. He became believing that God was still the same from the Bible days right until his very day. And in his book that he writes on healing, um, Leaves of Healing, is it? can't remember the first word, but in his book on healing, He writes that in his day, in the late 1800s and into the turn of the century, he writes that the problem with the church in his day, how much more in our modern day now, in the technical age that we live in, he writes in his day that people tend to look more to the medical profession. Think how far we have come even today, and that's where doubt comes in, where he says we should always be coming to the true surgeon, to the great physician, to the real doctor. And placing our all and our hopes in him. Now, I'm not against medical profession. If I, have a, if I have a banging headache, I take a cup of cocodamol or paracetamol. Don't get me wrong. Please don't get me wrong. God, I, I believe God gives us uh, men and women with abilities to help us in, medical, in the medical profession. So please don't get me wrong. But he's saying that we as a church have thrown out the miraculous of God and what he can do. So you see, we doubt so much that God doesn't move the way he could. Oh, well, he's sovereign. He could just barge in. Yes, he could. But he wants you and I to participate with him, to be co-laborers with him. As Christ says, as the Father do, so do I. And the Father says, I want to do, but you don't want to follow. We're too consumed with our televisions instead of the place of seeking God. We're too consumed with the things of the world now because it's all high-tech and all fast. It has to be done yesterday, not just today. 
And everything is so fast. We have no time to sit at his feet and to study the word and to pray. We have no time to put our whole faith, our hope and our trust in him. And the problem is, is we put God in the box of our time that we'll give him. When God says, when you are a child of God and the spirit of God is in you, you are possessed with power to work wonders if we would just yield ourselves in the fullness of faith to him. So as with here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 29, Paul asks, are all workers of miracles? I believe the Lord has given us all the ability to go and pray for someone. The term here, workers of miracles, means great and notable miracles. I believe they can happen today. Great and notable miracles. Do you know there's miracles happening every moment? Because you are a miracle. The very healing system in your body is a miracle set forth by God. When you've even taken a a minor illness, your body is a miracle to fight against it. God does miracles that you and I don't even know about. God does things in your life that you don't even know, and only eternity will prove those things that he has done for us. There's miracles happening all the time. All around. Now notice. He says in verse 9. He gives to another faith. Now we looked at this more. Really all yesterday. Or pardon me last Sunday morning. And as all believers have faith. There's different types of faith. Every faith for a believer. Is not their own faith. But it has been given by God. So the faith that you had last Sunday morning we spoke about that you now have again this morning to get out of your bed and to come into the place here to believe in someone you haven't seen but yet you're blessed by him. It's the same faith that you can draw from because he's not only the grounding of your faith but he is the reservoir of our faith. For example, we have saving faith as believers. Saving faith. And we should seek to go deeper. We looked at it last week and believe God for what's been called special faith. Faith for those difficult and hard times. Do you know the times whenever your own mind, your own thoughts, your 2020 vision sees the impossibility and the things that are never, ever, ever going to work? And you don't know how you're going to fix it and you don't know how you're going to get out of it. You don't know how you're going to get around it. You know all those sort of things that happen to you. And when we think of these things, your faith sometimes is tried so much you need what people call special faith. To dig deep, that faith that you're here every morning, you're just, it's like automatic. We're walking automatically. We're going to our place of prayer. We're going to our place of worship. We're going to our place where we're trying to be faithful in, in our meetings and to the things of God. But there's a time in our life that we really need to dig deep. And we're saying, Lord, I need something more. A special faith, of, if that's what we can call it. To be able to draw from God to get you through your situation. I was talking to someone, I think it was this week. And they're going through a trying time. And it's a worrying time for them. And they said to me, you know, sometimes I have my moments. I have my moments. I have my moments. You have your moments. And sometimes when we have a, whether it's an illness or something serious and we don't know how we're getting through it, we have faith to come and and we have faith to go on in God. And that's right, we're saved. That's fine. That's great. But there's a time when there's a, a special faith that's needed. Lord, help me at this present moment. Help me right now. I need you now. And you don't know how you got through it, but by his grace. I was talking to this person, and I said, you know, we all get like that. And they said, yeah, but suddenly then you, the word comes to me. Hear his voice in the word. And that just 
that special faith arises in them. And suddenly that which caused them to fear, to be anxious and to be worried, subsides because they know the still small voice within them causes them to walk on in victory. So there's saving faith when you're saved, and if I can call it special faith, when you need it in other times. And then we have a miracle working faith. A faith at times when you're praying and God just drops that word of faith into your life and you speak it to that person and their lives are changed. And a sickness is healed. The Bible, you see, this book that we lift and read every day, I hope you do. This book is just not any ordinary book. This is the very word of the living God. The God of the word is in the Word of God. And the Word of God shows us the living God of the Word. And every time I open this Word, He breathes on me. Every word is given by God. It's divinely breathed, and every time you open it, there's miracles in it. There's a miracle in this book for you. By taking the authority of the living word from the living God who is sovereign over all things and applying it to your situation, to your life, to your home, to your family, to whatever. Herein is the miraculous. This is the book that changed the world. And this is the book that changes a life. This is a book that when it's living In your heart, the word of Christ dwelling in you richly. It is in this book that you and I are taken from darkness unto light, from death unto life, from sickness unto health. And it's in this book we find the authoritative power of God. Now either we take it all or we don't take it at all. I believe this book from cover to cover is divinely inspired. I believe that this book from Genesis to Revelation shows Christ from beginning to the end, that he is the same yesterday and today and forever, that he is Savior. He is still the healer. He is still the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, and he is the soon coming King. I believe that with all of my heart. Every time I open this divinely inspired word that God says, Ken, I'm speaking to you. Apply it to your life. Apply it to where you are because God wants to tell you something. So this book is a miracle book. It's not just just stories about miracles. If all we see is stories, then stories are no good to you. But if you see the living God in it, if you see him alive and well, if you see him as all-powerful and sovereign, then this living book becomes alive in you. And when it becomes alive in you, it changes you for the good. Changes your heart, changes your mind, changes your thinking. And listen, it can change your circumstance and it can change that which is going on in your body. The authority of the Word of God is dynamite. The authority of the Word of God is license of God over your home, over your life. That you're saying, I'm laying down all of my life that you may be first, that I may be a love slave unto you. Is there anyone this morning who's willing in their heart to say, Lord, I'm giving it all to you. I'm handing it over. 
Here's something that we love to pray, but yet we take it back. Not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus went to the cross. That's not what I thought you'd do, Lord. But it was God's will. But it was God's will. But it was for the greater good for you and I, for our redemption. And listen, God raised him from the dead. As the Lord had told him in the word, Christ had to go through the veil of death that we might be saved. So this book is a miracle working book. So Paul writes to another, the working of miracles. See the word working here? It's a word energema. And it's where you and I get our word energy from. Energema or energy. It's a book and it means to be active, to be mighty, to show forth, to be mighty in operational power. This book, as we read it, it's mighty within us. When you read the word of God and it speaks to you and you apply that word to your life, does it not change your life? Does it not even go into your heart and challenge you? But yet when you yield to the challenge, God blesses that. Does mine every time. Sometimes I wrestle with the Lord. I feel like Jacob. It's in my nature. Oh, Jacob's in me. And he's wrestling with the Lord all the time. And I'm saying, oh, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. <laughs> and really, in all honesty, it's God who's got me. And he's saying, son, I'm trying to get it through to you. I'm trying to work it out of you. And when Israel came out of Egypt, it was great because when they came through the Red Sea, we're all praising. We're all ready. We see the miracle. The sea's open. We walk through on dry ground. And we get out the other side and we start to play our, our, our timbrels and our tambourines and we have our, our revival movement over on the other side. And isn't it wonderful? But when the trial comes, what happens? Oh, look, there's no water. And that's better. Where's God now? Do we forget the open sea? Do we forget the miracles, the plagues of Egypt? And you see, what it is, it's within us. You can bring Israel out of Egypt, but it was getting Egypt out of Israel was the problem. And we get so ingrained with things that, whether it's teaching that God is dead outside of salvation, that's really what people think. God is dead outside of salvation. He's alive for you in salvation, but he's dead in every other avenue. And I want to tell you, God is alive and well. And I want to tell you that God is keeping you and I. He wants to take Egypt out of us. The deadness. He wants to take the religion out of us. He wants us to be alive unto him. He wants us to be living for him. He wants you and I to yield our all to him because it tells us in the Psalms they limited the Holy One of Israel. Let's not limit God to what he can do. The word anagema means to be active and to be mighty. For example, let me show you some other scriptures in Galatians chapter 3, if you want to turn, and verse 5. Listen to what Paul says. He therefore that ministereth, ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Notice the works of the law. Paul says to them, look, in Israel they had the law. Israel had the works that they put on top of the law. Then the Jews brought the Talmudic religion into it or the Talmudic teachings and they added so much onto it and people were burdened with it. And the living God was outside of it. The living God wasn't doing anything with them anymore. He stopped speaking for 400 years. He says, now, the, that which God is doing with you now, Galatians, are you telling me you want to turn to this law? Do you want to live in a religious 
a lifestyle where it's all ceremony, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, we'll do it at this point, at this part, God can speak if he wants here, and here's a 15 minute sermonette, and we'll all go home happy clappy. Oh no, we're not happy clappy, I'm not doing that. A happy chappy. Brothers and sisters, see, God's bigger than that mentality. He's living. He's real. He's alive. And Paul says, is it the works of the law that you're seeing things minister to you? Is it that? Or is it by hearing of faith? Faith when Abraham, he goes on to talk about Abraham being called out and God calling him his friend and God imputing righteousness to him by faith. He says, see the miracles that God does. Do you want it or not? Then listen to his voice. Now, if the Holy Spirit can speak to a man and speak to a woman at the point of conversion or to bring them to conversion, if the Holy Spirit can speak then, how come we don't believe the Holy Ghost can speak in the church body, in the church setting? So here, Paul's saying it's the It's not the works of the law, but the hearing of faith that miracles will be done. Ephesians 2 and 20, we we hear it quoted. And the hymn was able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. And we stop there. But that's not the end of the verse. According. The word according is kata. With the dominance it means. It gives the idea of pressing something down with dominance. According to the power. It's the idea of it. The dominance of the power that works in you. The church has become like the Stepford Waves. Going to church today. Let's all sit down together. Let's all stand up and sing. Let's all go home again. Isn't that true? No. You're a lively stone. You're a living stone. You have the living God, the Holy Spirit, living in your soul. He's alive in you. Start to believe it. Start to believe it see the impossibility don't be doing that no I, I can't I can't listen you're not listening hearing of faith working of miracles this is what the scripture says I can't do oh, that was a bit poor wasn't it <laughs> I can't do and that doesn't mean to say we're not taking the word of God out of context because Paul's not saying try jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. That would be silly. He's speaking about all things under the rule and the authority and in the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify Christ. So Paul says, I can do all things. Let's say it together. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Come on, church. Be alive for God. Expect more. I'm not saying you command God and all this sort of... I'm just saying you just live and you believe that you are before him in love. That he's filling you with his spirit and he wants better for you. He, He wants to use you. And you're what he says and does through you. Listen, God could use you to pray for someone who's dying and you revive them to life again. There was a woman in Craig Alvin Area Hospital. And it was my first Christmas, two days before Boxing Day. My first Christmas uh, when I, we moved to Donna Cloney. And there was a big problem. This woman was dying and I sat with her husband and his name was the same as mine, by the way. And we sat chatting in the intensive care and the family were outside and she was lying dying and I sat down. 
And we were talking and I prayed with her. The woman got up and was sent home to Tandra Gay. And yet when I got out into the car park, I got a phone call from Alison. My own, dog, my own daughter had been attacked and, and ripped from here to there with a dog around her face. And I'm going, Lord, what's all this about? You're using me to do this, yet my own daughter. And the medical profession stitched her. I can't question that. I don't have the answers for it. But all I know is I give God the glory for what he did do. These things are real and they happen. I left my own father in intensive care. Praying for him and nothing happened and eventually he died. But yet when he was in intensive care, the Lord spoke to me sitting beside my father to get up and to go to Craig Avon Hospital. I was in the city hospital in Belfast. Get up and go to the city. And I get into the car and I drove to the city to a woman who, who was elderly and came to the church and the family were out in the waiting room waiting for her to die. And when I get up to the bed, she turns and she, she looks and she's lying in bed and she opens her eyes and very weakly she says, Pastor, she put her hand out. And she says, I've, and she mentioned her daughter's name. I've given her the, 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 the hymns, will you please? Make sure they're those hymns. And this word dropped into me and I said, listen, the Lord has sent me here to tell you you're not going to die and to pray with you. The woman was sitting up out of bed the next day and she's still alive today. Amen. And my father died. I can't work it out. I can't work it out. Gifts of healing. The word miracles here, the word miracles here is the word for power. It's the word dunamis. The word dunamis. So when we look at the working of miracles, it's the anagema of dunamis, or the energy of dunamis. Who are we? If we get our English word dynamite from it. Sometimes God gives us that hearing by the ear. Faith cometh by, and hearing by the word of God. Sometimes, for notable miracle, we lay hold on that word which we know is alive. And we pray just for the one. And we see them raised again. Notable. And God, with an energy from heaven, and with a dunamis, a dynamite power, he changes their situation around. Now Paul says, this is not from you. Don't ever look to me or anyone else to be a healer. I don't agree with anybody saying I am a healer. I do agree with the Holy Ghost using a person for someone to be healed. So, it's a supernatural act which has in it the inherent power of God. Some say the age of miracles has passed. We dealt with it in the objections section in part one. But we're told in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, God hath set. And the idea for set is to be firmly established. God has concreted these things. See the word, God has set. 
means the concrete, like concrete firmly established in the church. I didn't get to the other part this morning. Well, I'll maybe do one more week, and what I'm going to do is give you a break. I've asked Aaron to bring a message. Maybe next week or the week after, I'm not sure which way we'll, we'll work it. I'll talk to Aaron about it. And I'll give you a break from these because it's a continuing series, and I don't want to labor you with them. And then we'll go back into it again. The tongue interpretation and tongue and prophecy will be the last three gifts that we'll look at in, in the vocal gifts. And they're the main one people talk about. That's why I've left it to the end. God bless his word to us. For Jesus' name's sake. Amen.